I am Agent Hugh Manning. I have been reassigned to the field for training purposes. Seeing I am the second oldest surviving field agent, Director Zimbabwe Klein believes my knowledge and intuition will be useful to younger generations. I am assigned a case along with a new agent, one Miss Karen Appleton. Children of a small suburban town have been receiving ominous messages in their morning breakfast cereals. Concerned parent Tandy Bach noticed message. Neighborhood banded together when their children began to exhibit odd violent behavior. December 1st, 12.02 p.m. Operation Sugar Smacks. I have recorded Agent Appleton and I's first encounter for the sake of training purposes. Subjects I have recorded, I have done so with their explicit permission. So, you recorded me right now? Yes, this is correct. I'm Agent Karen Appleton. I'm from Michigan. I like playing strategy video games. Okay, thank you, Agent Appleton. We are recording for posterity in case of our deaths. I don't know if I'm okay with that. Dying or having your death be used as a cautionary tale to train other agents. Both, I guess. The chances of successfully making it to retirement age is 1 in 10. You should have your affairs in order, Agent Appleton. Sentimentality could be detrimental on the field. Cold logic is usually useful in our line of work. December 1st, 3.46 p.m. Operation Sugar Smacks. Due to my age, we decided that Agent Appleton should observe the children of the neighborhood. She relayed to me the violent pack mentality of the children in question. December 3rd, 3.21 p.m. Operation Sugar Smacks. We observed the neighborhood and noticed random acts of cruelty in the children. I was invited into the home of one Betty Grable to search for clues. I pour myself cereal. I receive no discernible message. I confiscate the cereal, which features a cartoonish clown figure on the box. December 4th, 12 p.m. Operation Sugar Smacks. After taking cereal to the lab, boys, they find that the cereal is in fact cereal. It is a tasty treat, though I must watch my blood sugar levels. What we are not sure of is the appearance of the cartoon clown. No one knows where this corporate spokesman has came from. The grocery store at which it was purchased has no record of who or where it was shipped from. December 5th, 7.50 a.m. Operation Sugar Smacks. We recommend to parents in the area not to buy said cereal. December 6th, 3.46 p.m. Operation Sugar Smacks. Agent Appleton sorts through her top 10 Marvel movies. December 6th, 9.12 p.m. Operation Sugar Smacks. Children have formed packs and roam the street like feral animals. Agent Appleton and myself must split up to deal with multiple incursions. December 6, 9.18 p.m. Operation Sugar Smacks. Miss Tandy Bach is dead, chewed up, and partially eaten. Two feral children assault me. Their teeth and fingers have formed into ghastly, unruly, and unwieldy fangs and claws. I sidekick one child and managed to fling the second child into a 65-inch television set. I do not wish to fire upon the children, so I concentrate my efforts into subdual and extraction of the parents. December 6, 9.20 p.m. Operation Sugar Smacks. Shots fired at the home of the Baxters. I am on the scene. December 6, 9.22 p.m. Operation Sugar Smacks. Agent Appleton is down. Her head was gnawed off by a pack of feral children. Children have bitten off two fingers on my left hand. I am fashioning a tourniquet. The children are chewing the door away. I pull my service revolver. I am morally conflicted on the taking of a child's life. This may be my last report, so I would like to bequeath my Stargate commemorative plates to Agent Cicero Macon in research and development. December 6th. 9.25 p.m. Operation Sugar Smacks. Children are directed to inflict violence on my person, and a two-dimensional clown mascot seems to have manifested itself off of the cereal box and into all reality. A pack of feral children rushed me down. I happened to have a Ziploc baggie of breakfast cereal, which I opened and scattered on the ground. 
As I suspected, the children are distracted by the sugary treats, giving me the leeway to focus my attention on said mascot clown. Stop, I commanded the indistinct creature. It growled at me and bore unnaturally sharp teeth. I fired my service revolver several times to no effect. However, on a hunch, I managed to spray said supernatural entity with oxypropyl alcohol left over from hastily tending my finger wounds. The two-dimensional image bled ink, squealed, and fled into the night. December 6, 9.28 p.m. Operation Sugar Smacks. I am in pursuit of the two-dimensional clown. Feral children wander the streets crying, as would be typical behavior to children of their age. The creature slips away into darkness once it manages to flee to the woods. December 6, 9.40 p.m. Operation Sugar Smacks. Children have no memory of the last night, which may be a stark advantage. Mascot Clown, as of this time, is not apprehended. This case will remain open until further review.